Notion is amazing to organize your work because it's one of the few tools that allows you to shape your setup exactly to your process. For example, if you're a fan of time blocking, well, there's no need to buy any expensive third-party software. You can do it all right in Notion. In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step step how. With this setup, you'll be able to keep track of your task, time block your week, and afterwards even get some insights into your workload and how you overall did. Ready? Let's dive right in. The first thing we need, of course, is a task database in Notion for our time tracking. Where basically, well, this is where we'll have our time tracking entries and see when we work on these tasks. And here you can see I have a simple setup with just a task, a due date, and then a few other properties to indicate where they belong and what their status is. You can use the same setup or you can actually check out my Notion for project management guide in the description if you want to build your own setup from scratch. In order to then actually record our time blocking, right? Besides the due date, I want to add a new date property uh, and I want to call this my time block. And this is a question of uh, personal preference, right? Maybe you say, you know, your due date is actually when you also want to work on that. So you don't need two separate time properties. I often like this to indicate a due date is, you know, by when I have to do this or else, you know, there's a penalty attached to it and the time blocking entry that's when I actually plan on doing the work. So I'd like to have them in two separate ones. And then the third thing that we need is Notion Calendar. You can time block also without Notion Calendar, but using Notion Calendar will make your life so much easier. And we're going to show you in a second exactly how. But basically, if you don't have it, make sure you download Notion Calendar and then uh, you're good to go. Next, I'm going to take all my tasks here and I'm just going to quickly select all of them and then say, okay, for the time block, I'm going to select just today's date, right? So we all have um, them here right now. And then I want to pull them into my calendar. In order to do so, I click on plus here. I need to create a new calendar view. And we can call this, you know, just our uh, sort of time block um, view. And here, what we need to make sure, right, is that we show the tasks by the time block date. So we click on the three dots and then on the layout, we can see here show calendar by. I want to switch this to time block. And now everything here uh, on this one might should have my dates. So, so far, so good. But of course, this is not a great time blocking view, right? Like, I mean, sure, I can I, I can range them uh, on the days, but, you know, I don't have really I see anything. Then that's the reason why we need Notion calendar. You can try to work around it in Notion, but it's just not as smooth as using the dedicated calendar. So... The next thing to do is head back over to the calendar and then you want to connect your Notion. Now, I have already set up my Notion connection and I see it here. Otherwise, you can click on the, the three dots right? and you can uh, you know, uh, manage workspaces in the settings. You'll be able to connect a new Notion workspace. After you've done that, your Notion workspace should show up here. And then you can click on the three dots and look for add Notion database. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to look for my time uh, blocking uh, database that I created just now. Sometimes it takes a second and you see also here in this little uh, icon that you need to have a calendar view set up previously, right? So you can't just, you know, create a, a database and then uh, pull in. No, you need to create a database in Notion, set up a calendar view for the database, and then you can pull into Notion Calendar. And now with one click, I have my time blocking task in here and you see all of a sudden all my tasks show up here at the top of the day, which means that now I can start taking these tasks and in Notion Calendar block them the way I want it, right? So let's say, okay, I want to work on Monday on these things. So I'm going to pick my first task and right? I'm going to put it on 8 a.m. by saying, okay, from 8 a.m. until 8 or uh, until 9. And right? I can uh, set a time like this, uh, take the next task, okay, this is something, you know, that I want to work for uh, a longer time and so on and so on, right? All of them can go in like that. And then with a few clicks, I have time blocked, you know, my Monday and my Tuesday with all the tasks that I want. And the cool thing is, and if I head back over now to Notion, right, you'll see that these tasks have times. And of course, the display in the calendar here is still not great. But if I head over back also to my all tasks, we see that for all these tasks, right, we have the current time block here set now in the property. And this is in sync, right? So if you change anything here, it changes automatically in calendar. If in the calendar you readjust it, it changes here. So with just a few minutes, you already have a working simple time blocking system in Notion. But now let's take it to the next level. Let's say, for example, you want to have sort of recurring blocks. Maybe every Wednesday morning, right, I want to have just a whole um, morning blocked to work on my newsletter. I can, of course, now create individual entries, but I can sort of have like my, you know, my uh, newsletter, uh, sort of newsletter uh, time, right, exclamation mark. And we know that we can uh, go in here, right, set this four times. So for example, for Wednesday, it will show up in my calendar here in a second, and I can drag it in there and pull it down, right, and say, okay, this uh, is what I want uh, on ADM here. And I could start duplicating this, right, and have it always every single week. But that's a little bit cumbersome, right, having to create this. So ideally, we would be able to do this automatically. Well, that's possible. We just need Lotion database automations as our helper. In order to do so, let's click here on the flash icon. And then let's set up our, you know, uh, that weekly, set weekly uh, Wednesday time. Let's call it that way. And our trigger will be the recurring, right? So every X 
I want something to happen. Now, you have a few options of how to set this up, but for the simplest version, what you probably want to do is you want to say, okay, every week I would like to repeat this on a Wednesday. Uh, you can set a time right around midnight, you can set a starting time, uh, and then you're good to go. And then the action will be that you want to add a page to my time blocking database. Uh, I can set this as a new item, or if I have a specific template, I could select it here. I call this then, you know, my newsletter time, exclamation mark. And then I will want to edit a second property, my time block property. Now, what exactly you set it to will depend a bit on how you want to see tasks, right? Uh, we won't be able to create exactly the same look as in, you know, like a normal calendar where we just simply set the event to recurring and then it just populates indefinitely right in the future. And if I go a year from now, right, I see this on a Wednesday. This is very hard to set up in Notion. But what we can do is we can say, okay, typically I need to, you know, plan my month in advance. So I want to always see the next four instances of my newsletter type and I want to have this then automated. So for the initial setup, what we'll have to do is we have to create these four instances once manually. So I'll say, okay, I need like, you know, the this one, I need one more time, two more time, and the third time. And then for each of them, I will set the actual um, uh, correct date, right? So we'll go in here, and in a second, they all pop up, right? Now we'll now move this from the 30th uh, da -da -da, to the 7th. I will move this one from 7 to um, 14, and I will set this one from 14 to 21. All right, now that we have that set up, we can go back to our flash icon and sort of calculate, okay, this week, when should the next entry be created? So let's go in here on the flash icon, whoops, like this. Uh, say here, I want to edit this one. And now I can say, okay, for my time block property, I want to set a custom formula. I want to say the date when this triggers, right? I want to take that and I want to add days to it. So date add. And what I want to add are it's like three that we have in advance, right? So we need to put it on the fourth slot in the future, which means four times seven, right? 28 uh, and then comma days. And then we can close this off. And now what will happen is that every Wednesday, this automation will go in and we'll create a new entry 28 days in the future. And if you want to set also the time, right? We can do this as well. So we can uh, do the, the date, um, the form, uh, sorry, the range, one second. So let's click back here, right? Let's edit uh, the setup. And now we can write our actual time. The one thing though that we uh, need to update as well is quickly up here, right? We set uh, here around midnight and we wanna have it start at the correct time block, right? So we say, okay, this actually should be at 8 a.m. when my time block should start. That's when I wanna create this. And then I can go in here and for the time that it says here, I can say custom formula. And I can now say, okay, please give me um, the time when this triggered. And then I can add the corresponding days to it, right? So I can say, okay, time triggered dot date add. I want to add 28 uh, days to this, right? We have the next, when it triggers, we have three more weeks already advanced with an entry and it needs to put on the fourth thing, right? So four times seven in advance and then we can trigger. So it will create a new entry at 8 a.m. in the future. Now, if you also want the end time correctly, right? You need to make this formula a little bit more robust. You need to go in and actually like just copy and uh, quickly cut this out and we need to set a date range, right? A date range allows us to specify a start date and an end date. And our start date will exactly what we have here already, right? The time triggered, date at 21, eight days. And the end time will be the same thing, right? Date triggered, date at 28 days. But then after we're done with the date at, we need to do another date at, right? We need to uh, add again something to it, but this time not full days, but just the duration. Right? So if you wanna have a time block for five hours, we would put in five and hours and then close it off. And now, right, what happens is whenever this triggers, it will go 28 days in the future, uh, and create an entry from the starting time that we have set here, right, when it triggers, until the plus five hours in the end. Which means we have this rolling four weeks, right? So we, we can't again, right, go three months in the future and see our time block. We can have this rolling average kind of every four weeks we have new entries fresh in our calendar with the correct time blocking popping up. So now that we have sort of our idea of how we want to work with our time blocking, let's add one more layer to that. And that's like an analytics view afterwards to so see, did we actually do what we tried doing? In order to do so, we want to add a few more properties here. Let's go in there and let's create a new uh, date property and let's call this, you know, um, work. Perfect. And then uh, we want to create two buttons here. Button number one will say start working. Huh? And this will work similar to uh, the time tracking method that I already shared here a few weeks ago. I have this link also in the description. If you want to build, you know, dedicated time tracking notion, you can go check it out. This is kind of a simplified version of it. Uh, specifically for this purpose, I want to um, start working and stop working and just see when did we actually have this task in our time block. So 
what I want to do is when I go in and say start working, when we click this button, what I want to do is I want to set the um, the time in this property. So I want to go edit property and I'll say work slot and let's set this to the time triggered. Perfect. Which means I can now click in here, right? And it says, like, okay, April 27th, right? 1.13 p.m. And now I can go in here, right? For stop working, I can say, okay, when I click this, what I want to do is I also want to edit a property. I want to edit my work slot, but with a custom formula. What should happen is I want to go to this page, right? And from this page, I would like to get um, the work slot, the start time, right? This is what I want to have in there. And then I want to also add the end time, right? Which is the current time. So in order to do this, right, we need to do again the date range, right? So I'm going to copy all of this out, right? And same as before, right? We're going to use the date range operator. Our starting time is what we have there actually. And our end time is then the time triggered. And now I can click on save and on save and then we can wait a minute, right? And then we'll actually set this to the same range from 113 to uh, 140, right? Because I mean, just a minute passed. But you get the gist. This means now you can, whenever you start work on something, right? You can click on uh, your start working button. When you stop working, you click on your stop working button and then we'll create another view here. And I'm just going to duplicate this and we're going to call this our, you know, work or like retrospect, <laughs> retrospect view. And in here, we want to show as our, if we want to show it by time lock, but we want to show it by the actual work slot. And you see it probably coming together now because we can now head over back to Notion Calendar, pull that view into Notion Calendar and compare it. We actually, when we set our work slots should happen, did that actually, well, does it match right with the times when we actually worked? In order to do so, let's go again right here uh, in our Notion Calendar, click on the three dots, say add Notion database. We search for our same one again, right? Time blocking tasks. Now you see both of our views pop up here. Right? Before that, we had only one, so that pulled it in. We have our time block view already, but now we want the retrospect view. And now it will have that here as well. And we can have different colors for them, right? So if I say, okay, this one, and I don't want gray, right? Maybe I want like orange to see how I actually work on these things. And you see this one task, right? And I just started tracking, already pops up here. Now, unfortunately, uh, one thing that I wish was a little bit easier is that I could rename them here in my site, all right? Uh, in the cloud, that would be a nice quality black because now you see it's both time blocking and then we just have like a slight gray behind it the name of the view uh, but that's just something you need to live with for now until the notion uh, changes it in the calendar but so pretty easy right with that to now time block your week and then afterwards whenever you work on these things start the trackers with the buttons and then see okay this is how you actually you know went ahead and did things now that you know how to time block a notion you probably noticed one thing notion formulas and automations are incredibly powerful but they can also be quite tough to learn. That's why I put together an ultimate Notion masterclass. With this one, you'll become a Notion expert in no time and learn everything you need to know about formulas and automations. And it's completely free. Just click here and I'll see you in a few seconds.